Look at the bloody weather out there. It is absolutely pissing it down in the UK. And what date are we? We're on the, can't see because my little hand's covering the what's it. It's the 15th of January, Sunday. And my good lady wife in there is just uh, getting a, a, a Sunday dinner on. And uh, that's very good really, considering she's just had a major knee operation. Well, four weeks ago actually. Any road up, why haven't I been doing me, uh, me brewing vlogs? Number one, uh, my wife Sue's had the knee hop and uh, that's been quite traumatic for her. And uh... right quite disastrous really on the old beer front um <laughs> number one number one major disaster i'd got a beautiful brew going and um i were trying an experimental sort of stouty mildy sort of ale quite strong spent a full bloody day uh doing the brew which as it turned out was excellent it hit the spot dead on <laughs> and uh, what happened was that um, it had finished fermenting, right, and I've, my fermenters, I've shown you my fermenters, the, the, the really good ones with a screwing top and, you know, you can get your arm into what. Any road up, cutting a long story short, finished fermenting, hadn't it? Got on my steps, I always ferment me, me beer um, on top of the fridge, I got my steps up onto the top of the fridge, got the handle, <laughs> like this, look. And the freaking handle broke off. It all of the floor. It were everywhere, absolutely swimming in it. So the boss was upstairs. <laughs> so I didn't say anything because it were all up the bloody wall, the beer all up the bloody wall. And for I mean it were what were it, 21 litres, 21 litres. It were like a bleeding river in the kitchen. It was absolutely covered. It took me an hour to, to, to get all the beer up into the mop and bucket you know and <laughs> it was a disaster absolutely disaster so that was the start of it right moving on <laughs> moving on I went out to do another brew didn't I and I don't mean to be rude on this but I've never seen the much shit on the bench, on the floor, everywhere. And it weren't just shit, it was rat shit. I tell you not. And it was absolutely covered in rat shit. <laughs> so I thought, oh God, what am I gonna do now? So, as luck would have it, my daughter's had rats in the past and um, she got some proper traps off <laughs> a mate who's a rat catcher and these bloody traps uh, have got teeth they're like I can only describe them as pegs and you, you squash these peg like traps and what had I got to put in the traps I thought shall I put cheese nah so I've got some Bourneville chocolate the the, um, the the dark chocolate so I whacked that in two traps and I've also got um, an electric one, supposed to be a U main one. Any road up, first night caught one, quite a medium sized rat, I guess. So I thought, bloody hell. So I got that bugger out, put it in a bag, whacked it in the dustbin, set them again. Next day, caught another one, took it out, whacked it in a bag in the dustbin. Next day, another one. So three on the trot, right? And I thought, well, surely that must be it now. Surely I've got all the bloody rats. Next day, the daddy rat, the bloody boss of rats, he was a right big bugger. And what he got was his head caught in the trap, which had squashed it. His tail had whipped round into the other one. 
bang on that bugger, chopped half his bloody tail off, didn't he? He weren't an happy rat. And you could see it made a mess because it, it, it obviously not quite dead in it. We're trying to get out this trap. It's quite cruel really, isn't it? Quite vivid. And his tail were in the other trap. So the poor bugger was in a right state, I guess, and he knocked me bottles flying and God knows what. Any road up. I haven't caught one since then. But he's ended up in the dustbin in a bag as well. He were a big bugger. <sighs> Any road up. The bloody garage is at the, the garage. The bloody the brewery is is such a a bloody mess now. And if that weren't enough, the winds blew the bloody roof felt off. So it's soaking wet in there. So it's just one disaster after another. Any road up, I'm gonna have a little break here, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do a test taste because I've had I've had beer mail. Speak later. Right, onward and upwards. Now, I've, I get quite a lot of correspondence and uh, quite in-depth ones. And one in particular is a gentleman called Dave Barker. He uh, lives over in Norway, from what I can guess. He, uh, uh, he sent us some beer mail. And I can't thank you enough, Dave, because I'm completely out of beer, absolutely out of beer. I've not been, I've not been brewing for two months, and normally I've got a stack of ale, but I've drank it dry, and now I've even drank the Cooper's Lager, which was absolute shite. It was absolute rubbish, but I've, I've, I've even drank the Cooper's Lager. Now you know me taste buds; they're not the greatest in the world, but this, this Cooper's Lager, it was utter utter crap but I've drunk the lot and now I'm down to the cider that I made for Sue who won't touch it with a barge pole because that's shite it's quite sour and I'm even drinking that so cutting another long story extremely short or long I've had beer mail and it's from Dave Barker all the way from Norway and it's called Scrooge's Revenge I understand it's 10.5 and I haven't got a clue what it's going to taste like so, without further ado, I've got my glass. That should have rung better than that. Not bad. I've had it in the fridge. Um, I've took it out last night, actually, because I like warm beer. Now, this has been sitting in the kitchen, so I'm really looking forward to this, and I'm bloody gagging. And, and Dave's told me not to, to quaff it down, which I, I don't intend to do. So, now, I don't want to cock this up, so what I'm going to do, look, you see this? I've got my mirror here. I'm going to whack that at the back of the bloody camera to see if it's working, because I don't want to do... I don't want to cock this up. Yeah, yeah, it's still... What is it filming? Is it? Yeah, yeah, the red bloody watch it's going, so without... No further ado, I'm going to crack this open. I bet the battery will go flat now. So let's get you near there. And oh, there's a nice cyst there, Dave. It smells all right. So let's give it a pour. Now I understand that Dave's kept this for a year. It's um, it's a long-term sort of uh, project. Is Scrooge's revenge. And it's a, I guess it's a, a, a barley winey type of, uh, of drink. So it's fairly dark colour. I guess I should have uh, served it a little cooler so that we've got a little bit more of a head. But I'm not worried about that. Yeah, it is a very barley winey uh, type of uh, drink here. It's very, very smooth, really nice and rounded. It's got a nice rounded taste. It's not particularly clear, but maybe it's because I've shook it about a bit too much. I don't know. I don't know whether it's supposed to be clear. It's got to be respected, is this? It's got to be respected because, but I don't quaff it. I don't quaff it. I'll still be on my bloody back. But it's been such a long while since I've had some beer. It's beautiful to get some proper beer. I've been drinking that bloody... I keep going on, I shouldn't be slagging off Coopers because it's supposed to be good beer, but oh, the lad were absolute shite. Now this is something else. Any road up, 
Sorry for being so long in uh, getting a, a, a vlog up and thanks for sticking around and, and maybe even watching watching this vlog and I hope this year is going to be a great new year and I've not wished everybody an happy Christmas and a happy new year so I shall do that with a little quaff of uh, Scrooge's Revenge cheers have a great year and I'm going to end this note by saying